since we started this project, we've had thousands of viewers on YouTube. We've had over 100 members now join us on our exclusive Facebook group. And so today it gives me great pleasure to be able to introduce you to Tiny Basic Computers version 3.0 Alpha. This video series is funded in part by our kind backers on Patreon. Join today from just $3 per month and gain access to exclusive video and project related downloadable content. Visit patreon.com slash wifi sheep. Links are in the description to this video. Hello and welcome back to Tiny Basic Computers from youtube.com forward slash wifi sheep. My name is Tom and this is part six of our ongoing Build It Yourself 8-bit computer series. If you're not up to speed about the project so far, basically this series I'm showing you how you can build a real programmable electronic standalone 8-bit computer that uses the tiny basic programming language. If you're brand new to the project I would strongly recommend that you check out our playlist which is in the description to this video or on screen now is the introduction video which will bring you up to speed on everything we've done to the project so far. Accompanying us for much of this project and most of the videos here on Wi-Fi Sheep has been our partners and sponsors PCBGoGo.com. PCBGoGo is a leading specialist in surface mount and through hole mix technology PCB assembly and electronic manufacturing services as well as turnkey electronic PCB assembly. In fact I've actually just received directly from their factories in China a brand new set of custom PCBs for our tiny basic computers project and we'll be doing a new custom build of the PCB version in an upcoming video. If you'd like a custom versions of the Tiny Basic Computers PCB, we will be releasing them to our Patreons from next month. In the meantime, you can join PCB GoGo for free right now by following the affiliate link in the description to this video. So, as mentioned in the video, today I'm going to be releasing a brand new set of firmware for the Tiny Basic Computers project. This is version 3.0 Alpha and it will be the final free version made available to our members on our Facebook group which is free to join if you're not there already you can find the link in the description of this video or you can go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash WFS Tiny Basic. Now, version 3.0 Alpha contains a large amount of improvements, which I think will make the whole experience of programming with the tiny basic computer systems a lot more easier to use and a lot smoother. Now, for a lot of improvements, we have to thank Scott Julian of AlphaWorks.au. Scott has put a lot of time and effort into taking Tiny Basic for the Arduino platform and making a lot of custom changes and brand new code to kind of bring it up to spec. And Scott has been very generous in sharing this new closed source with me here at Wi-Fi Sheep and in turn I've been given permission to share some of these updates with you and this is what will form part of the brand new 3.0 Alpha Hex ROMs. So to get hold of the ROMs after joining our Facebook group, you click the download link which will be in the top of the group page. This will take you to a Google Drive and you can download the zip file. Unzip the file and you'll find two hex ROMs. One is your basic kernel which needs to be flashed to one of your nanos and the other is now a single video kernel which needs to go to the, either the other nano or if you're building the secondary system it needs to be flashed to the Atmega 328p. This single ROM replaces the two we had previous so regardless of where you are in the world if you're using NTSC or PAL you flash the same ROM. Now after downloading you need to remove the nanos and the Atmega 328ps from the breadboard. Don't try to flash them in situ as this can cause problems. For nanos you need to attach a USB and attach to your Windows PC. 
And in the case of 328p microcontrollers, I would actually use a modded Arduino Uno. And you can see that in this video, which is on screen now. For uploading, which we have done before, we use Xloader, which is part of our Patreon toolkit, or you can find Xloader by Googling it online. Xloader is a free tool, and after you boot it up, you need to plug your USB device in and find the COM port it's on. You then need to custom set the baud rating, which for Xloader needs to be set to 115200. That's 115200. Before selecting the first of the two hex files you need to upload. Now, some users will have problems with this not working, and that's actually due to the bootloader. Unfortunately, with some clone nanos, you're sometimes not able to know which version of the bootloader they actually come with. So in a future video, very shortly here on the channel, we will go over how to reflash the bootloader. So if you're having issues, hold tight and we'll see you in the next video where we'll deal with flashing bootloaders. Once you've successfully updated the new hex ROMs to your Arduino Nanos and or Atmega 328p microcontrollers, you can reassemble them back into your PCB breadboards. However, before you can boot, the new kernel requires some modification to the video side of your system. So what we're going to use is an additional 1K resistor from the pack that you probably got from your uh, original build. Resistors at the very minimum normally come in packs of 10 and so far we've actually only used three 1K resistors on the PCB or the breadboard. So let's just take another resistor off, 1K resistor. And we'll just bend the pins roughly into the sort of shape we need, which is something like that. And first of all, let's have a look at the first solderless breadboard build. This is the one that used two Arduino Nanos. On the second Arduino Nano, which acts as the terminal and video out, we need to apply our resistor to pin D13, which is this one right on the end here. D13 is known as the command pin on our tiny basic systems. So the new video ROM or hex ROM is dual NTSC for North America and PAL for the rest of the world. By default, it would boot into PAL mode. However, as pin D13 controls, if it boots into PAL or NTSC, if the pin isn't either pulled high or low, it will float, which means that it may change to high or low on its own, which means you may get the thing booting in PAL when the next time you reset or boot, it boots into NTSC, that you won't be able to control it. So it's really important that we either pull pin 13 high, which is a 1, or we pull it low, which is a 0. So for PAL, which is most of the world, with the exception of North America and Japan, we'll want to pull it to ground or low. So we, we have the 0 rail here, which is a negative or minus, and we've got pin 13. So I'm going to take my resistor and I'm simply going to there we are, bridge from the uh, column that is 13 to the row along here, which is ground or zero volts. And when we boot this up, this will now always pull itself down, which means it will always boot by default into PAL. If you're watching me in North America, Canada, Mexico or Japan, your default television standard is NDSC or National Television Standards Committee. So PAL won't be much good to you, as you've got to remember we are outputting on an analog out, which means if you're using this on an old style CRT, especially in North America, it's not going to like the European PAL signal. All you have to do is we have to pull pin 13 high. Now, you could just take it out of the negative and put it into the plus, but that will then put 5 volts straight through. And because the nanos regulate from 5 volts and then use 3.3 volts to output, you're actually overvolting and creating a bit of a problem on the pins. So what I recommend to do is you'll notice next to D13, there is another pin, which is it's upside down here, but it's actually the 3 volt or 3.3 volt power rail pin. 
So in this case, and again, this can be a little bit fiddly, all we need to do is actually bridge these two columns. So we go from D13 and we just bridge D13 through the resistor into the 3.3 output, which is next to it. And that will now pull D13 high. And in this setup, it will now default to booting in NTSC. Now let's move on to if you've built the slightly more advanced solderless breadboard version. This is the version that has the main CPU and basic terminal still on an Arduino Nano, but it replaces the video circuitry with a standalone Atmega 328P microcontroller. Now it's the same principle with the microcontroller, but it's a little bit more fiddly because obviously the pins aren't labeled. D13 is still the command pin and D13 is down here. So it's one, two, three, four, five from this bottom row inwards. And you can see here that all I have done is again, using a 1K resistor, I've just for PAL, I have pulled pin 13 to the minus ground. This minus rail, by the way, is looped around the top rail and is connected in circuit. If you built this diagram and you're in North America and you want this on NTSC, you actually now have to pull this chip, which is operating on 5 volts, to the 5 volt power rail. That's simple enough to do. We simply take out the resistor, we hop it along one pin, so it now goes into the plus, and we'll put that back into pin D13. The problem with the way we design the circuit is that this outer positive rail isn't actually attached to anything. There's no positive voltage here. So to get around that, what you actually have to do for NTSC is bridge with an additional piece of wire from this plus here down to this power rail here. And I have here a jumper which I've very quickly made up. So we'll bridge from this top rail, which is live and we'll just bridge to the bottom here. Obviously you'd probably make a cable much neater and shorter than that. And that will now make this bottom rail live on five volts. And that in turn will allow us to pull pin D13 to high, which in turn will force this chip to boot in NTSC. Now, as I've just shown you, Depending on which configuration you set pin 13 on the video side of your system, you can set NTSC and PAL. However, you may have noticed that there's actually less character definition on the NTSC side than there is the PAL. There's basically more screen space and more words and letters can be fitted on the screen on the PAL side. This is actually due to the way that both NTSC and PAL, these are analog standards, actually work. Got to bear in mind that NTSC came out in North America at the very beginning of the 1950s, whereas PAL, which was released here in Europe, came out at the end of the 1960s. So there's well over a decade's worth of technology between them, which actually means that PAL, even in its analog form, is a slightly higher definition format than its NTSC counterpart. That's why, especially when we're dealing with these kind of lower resolution analog outputs, you get a difference of resolution between the two standards. So let's start by taking you on an introductory tour to Tiny Basic Computers version 3.0 Alpha. And we'll start from booting the machine up, and you'll notice it now actually boots a lot quicker. That is because the BARD rate has been changed. On the previous builds, we were using 300 BARD, which was the same as the Apple One, which was admittedly very slow. We have now changed that to run at 9600, that's 9600 BARD, which is a lot, lot faster. And it'll give you a much faster impression as you use the machine. The machine itself, the computer, isn't actually running any faster. It's clocked to 16 megahertz, which is actually very fast for such a basic 8-bit system. Most systems at the time ran at around one or two megahertz. What slowed it down was the BARD rate. That's the rate at which characters can actually be printed to the screen. So if I now ask memory, you'll see how instant it just brings up the data 
um, which it didn't do before. It used to sort of physically type out character by character. So that's the first improvement. Let's just do a quick reset. Also, you'll notice that there's a lot less random characters appearing on the screen now. It won't completely eliminate uh, all random characters, but you won't get as much noise even on the uh, breadboard, soulless breadboard builds. You'll find it'll actually work a lot better and it'll feel a lot more solid. Another improvement which has been brought over to us from Scott Julian at AlphaWorks is the ability to actually escape out of looping programs. This is something that's pretty much key and standard with all basics, but something that didn't work properly with the earlier versions of tiny basic computers here on the Arduino platform. So for example, we do a very simple looping program. So if I say 10 print uh, high 20, go to 10, you could say 30 end, you don't actually need to put end in, but there we go. Okay, so let's just list that program, make sure it's in the system. There it is. Now, if I actually run this, it'll repetitively loop the word hi. Now, before, I wasn't able to physically break out of this because we're in a loop and it's actually locked the keyboard out. The only way to break this was to actually physically reset or power cycle the machine. But of course, if you hadn't saved this program into the EEPROM memory, you'd lose the program. However, now you can hit escape and the program will break out of its loop and we can list again and we could, for example, make any changes we wanted to. So I could uh, reprint the line. And as you can see, it's now made a change and it's just looping the word hi all. So let's just reset. One of the final changes is we have managed to increase the amount of memory available. So the previous versions topped out at 999 bytes. However, in this version, you can see that your available working RAM is now just shy of 1K. It's 1019 bytes of working memory. And the onboard EEPROM that's for saving has a full 1K. That's 1024 bytes available. So nearly a full 1K, but it's certainly a lot better than it was. So there you have it. Tiny Basic Computers version 3.0 Alpha is now available. You can get it from our Facebook group. Join now. It's free. It's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash WFS Tiny Basic. You can keep up to date with the project and any new videos by subscribing to us here on Wi-Fi Sheep and clicking that notification bell, as well as following us on Twitter. The Twitter address is at Wi-Fi Sheep. That's at Wi-Fi Sheep on Twitter. Patreon backers, there'll be some new stuff for you very shortly, including the downloadable Gerber files to be able to commission and make your own clone PCBs if you want to take the project to the next level. And we'll be doing a full build video on that very shortly. In the meantime, if you plan to get PCBs made, please do join PCB GoGo. It's free. The links are in the description to this video. Well, that's just about it for this episode of Tiny Basic Computers. Hope you've really enjoyed it. Thanks once again for your company, and I'll see you real soon. Until next time, bye for now. Thank you.